All right, let's take pick up what we left off with from insulin and start talking about glucagon. Glucagon has an opposite effect of insulin, and as this guy is going to explain to us, uh, it has many other uh, effects on different types of tissues as well. Uh, so let's take a look and see what he has to say. From interesting things such as artworks, I would be greatly appreciated. And please change the quality settings to the highest one for better graphics of these videos. And in this video, we're going to talk about glucagon, a peptide hormone. And its main role is in is in keep Again, quick review. Peptide hormone just means protein hormone, which should start equating in your brain as being a polar molecule. So therefore, it's going to meet its receptor on the surface of the membrane because it's not allowed to go into the membrane or in through the membrane into the interior of the cell uh, to meet up with its receptor. So remember, peptide hormones always have the receptors on the cell surface. That's where they will, they will initiate the cascade of events that occur to, in order to carry out their function. Whereas steroid hormones, they will, are allowed to travel through the membrane into the cytoplasm and sometimes even into the nucleus of the cell before reaching its receptor. Keeping the homeostatic conditions of metabolism and its, and its effects are opposite to that of insulin. Now, within the pancreas, we have these alpha cells, and it's these alpha cells which create glucagon. And as I mentioned, glucagon has opposite effects of insulin. Where insulin wants to promote uh, the storage of excess energy, glucagon wants to promote the breakdown of certain things in our body. To pro okay, so again, there's a big difference. Insulin uh, promotes storage. Glucagon promotes the breakdown of things. Provide energy for the body. So it is Sorry, I cut him off. It says you, it, it promotes the breakdown of things to provide energy for things in our body. Essentially signals the fasted state. Because, for example, within the fast, fasted state, you have low blood glucose level, as in high. So, again, fasted state just means you haven't eaten in 12 plus hours or however long it takes you to reach that fasted state. And what he, what he, I can just cut him off. He mentions hypoglycemia. In other words, you have hypo, low, glycemia. Glyce means gl glucose, and the suffix emia means blood, so low blood sugar levels. That's what hypoglycemia means. Hypoglycemia. And then glucagon will be secreted, which will cause the liver to uh, give glucose to the blood, to uh, regulate the blood glucose levels. And now I will show you um, the effects glucagon ha have, has on various uh, organs within the body when we are in a fasted state. So here we have the bloodstream, and it has uh, hypoglycemia, uh, very low blood glucose. And here we have the liver, and adipose tissue, and also skeletal muscle. Okay, so we're in a fasted state with low blood glucose levels, as in hypoglycemia. This will cause the alpha cells to secrete glucagon. What's important to know is that glucagon has no effect on skeletal muscle because there are no glucagon receptors in skeletal muscle. And we talked about the importance of receptors in hearing a hormone signal. If a target tissue does not have the, the correct receptor, it's essentially deaf to the hormonal signal. So as he mentions here, uh, glucagon has zero effect on skeletal muscle or anything in, involved in skeletal muscle because skeletal muscle doesn't have the correct receptor for glucagon. So therefore, essentially, it's deaf to the, to the hormonal signal of glucagon. It can't hear it. Glucagon does have an effect on adipose tissue, though. And it stimulates the breakdown or degradation of triacylglycerols into glycerol and fatty acids. These fatty acids and glycerol will then travel to the liver. Glucagon will promote the conversion of fatty acids to ketone bodies, so that ketone bodies can be used as a source of fuel during the fasted state. For the brain and skeletal muscle, for example. Glucagon will also promote gluconeogenesis to make more glucose. Okay, he's just mentioned a couple different processes that occur as a result of glucagon. I've got these things defined on my, on my website if you go back to my website and, and look at the definitions underneath the links here. Uh, first one, he said the degradation of triacylglycerol, in other words, the breakdown of triglycerides, sometimes called lipolysis. Uh, prefix lipo meaning lipids, uh, lysis means to break. So these triglycerides are being broken up into their components, fatty acids and glycerol, Fatty acids can then be chopped up into two carbon fragments called ketone bodies, and they can be used and enter the mitochondria at a different stage of respiration and used to make ATP for nerve conduction uh, and muscle tissues and things like that. So in other words, glucagon uh, stimulates the breakdown of fat. Uh, it might be beneficial for some people. Uh, 
but it also stimulates a process called gluconeogenesis. The prefix, as you might have figured out by now, gluco always refers to sugar. Neo means new, and genesis means creation. So if you want to put it all together, gluconeogenesis means the creation of new glucose. Again, genesis, creation, neo, new, gluco, glucose. So it stimulates the creation of new, new glucose from some of these other substrates uh, that are available. He'll explain in just a second. Because now the liver has glycerol, glycerol can go uh, through gluconeogenesis to be converted to glucose 6-phosphate. Glycogen, glucagon, sorry, also promotes the breakdown of glycogen uh, via gluconeogenesis as well to make glucose 6-phosphate. And glucose 6-phosphate can then be converted to glucose. And then this is when the liver secretes glucose in the bloodstream to regulate the blood glucose levels, to increase glucose, uh, blood glucose levels. Time out. Before I forget, uh, the breakdown of glycogen to create glucose eventually is sometimes called glycolysis. Again, glyco referring to sugar and or glycogen specifically, and lysis means split. So glycolysis uh, is uh, a lot of times uh, another way of describing the breakdown or hydrolysis of glycogen, chopping it up, releasing the glucose in a, through several enzymatic controlled reactions. Uh, so it can bring your blood sugar levels back up to normal. Uh, the proteins in the liver can um, go via proteolysis to uh, make amino acids, and these amino acids can then be fed into gluconeogenesis. Okay, proteolysis, again, proteo, the prefix means protein, and hopefully you're starting to see the pattern. Lysis means to split. So proteolysis, glycolysis, uh, lipolysis, lipolysis, if you want to call it that, uh, they all mean the splitting or breaking down of these uh, macronutrients back into the monomers so that those mon monomers can be either used for fuel directly like fatty acids into ketones or so they can be converted into glucose because remember it's just a rearrangement of the atoms to form whatever our body needs at a time. So proteins can be broken down into amino acids and then amino acids can go through the process of gluconeogenesis. So in other words, we can create glucose out of those amino acids uh, just like we can create glucose out of glycogen. Or the glycerol from the fatty from the lipids, the, the triglycerides we broke down to make uh, glucose six phosphate and then glucose, and this is also promoted by glucagon. And it's important to note that the muscles can also provide amino acids into the liver uh, during a fasted state, but this is not caused by the effects of glucagon because remember, glucagon has no effect on skeletal muscle. Again, key aspect to remember. Yes, skeletal muscle is an absolute last resort, starving, have no fat available, all your glycogen stores are, are used up, then your body will, if it needs to, uh, start breaking down muscle tissue. But again, it's going to hang on to that muscle tissue as long as possible. That muscle tissue is important to survival. Uh, so, But again, if it needs to, it can release some amino acids that enter the liver that then can be contributed into uh, gluconeogenesis and creating glucose. Uh, to be dumped into the bloodstream, but again, it is not a result of glucagon because glucagon uh, uh, does not have receptors uh, that recognize it in skeletal muscle, so it's through a different mechanism. And so that was an overview of the sex effects glucagon has on various organs. All right, so I hope that helps out. Uh, remember, insulin has a storing effect, glucagon has a breakdown effect. I've got these terms, uh, lipolysis, gluconeogenesis, Glyco, uh, glycogenolysis, I think it was, I think I called it glycolysis earlier, it was glycogenolysis, not glycolysis, uh, that is the breakdown of glycogen into glucose. Uh, but again, check my website, I've got those terms uh, defined for you. Uh, again, get familiar with them, understand, break them down, remember they're just a bunch of prefixes and suffixes all squished together to create a new meaning. Uh, practice them, review them. Uh, they're not common table talks, so it's going to take a little bit outside study and review. I hope this helps you guys.